Hi guys. Um, it's turned into a really nice day today, so I thought I'd do a vlog outside. Um, so, today I am going to talk about dating. As anyone who knows me will know, I have been on so many dates. You might think, is that because you're a slag? No. Is that because you just love the attention? Wrong again. Is that because you like getting free meals and free drinks? If only I wasn't pretty much always the one that was paying for these things. Is it because of the keyboard personalities? Bingo. Keyboard personalities, by that I mean people that are so confident and out there and not who they actually are on the keyboard or on your phone or however, however you're talking to these people. They're people that just project this air of confidence and just life and extrovertedness and really they're just like you meet them and you're like hi oh hi how are you yeah I'm good great so that's where the conversation ends so I want to talk about dating specifically gay dating and gay apps I might do more videos on dating so this is just going to be the app edition so I started off on plenty of fish now plenty of fish has like hundreds of thousands of millions of people on it um, and I think it was like the largest if not still is the largest dating website out there um, and that's where I started out but obviously you move on from things technology moves on and things become a lot easier and simpler and better known like plenty of fish was known as just like the boring one I think to me and my friends so we then moved on to other ones the other one that I first moved on to was Grinder. now I think everyone in the history of people knows about Grinder. Um, straight people know it gay people know it bisexual blah 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 I loved it at the start I thought this is great like you can everyone around you is on this app you move away people around you in that area are on the app but you slowly get to realize even though um, it's meant to have like over 4 million gay people in 192 countries on it with 10,000 new people downloading it a day those 10,000 new people are usually just after one thing and I found that out with quite a few of these apps, if not all of them. But how do you target an audience so specifically? There's, it, I think it's always going to happen that you're going to get people on there that just turn it into something sordid and about sex. But yeah, it's just it seems to be all about sex, all about like what categories you fit into, like what tribes and things like that. And I think it's turned into something that you just go on to to have a bit of fun. I have met some really nice people on there and I know some of my friends have been or still are on there because they have met people that are nice on there or yes they've had a bit of fun with someone but it's also turned into a friendship. The other one I toyed with for a little bit was Scruff. Apparently over 50 million messages are exchanged on there um, and it's more geared towards the sort of like bears and things like that. But I just found that really hard to use and full of older men, which is fine. But as a 26 year old, I don't really want to be venturing into like men in their 60s. It just felt a bit fetishy and not really my sort of thing. I'm a bit of a plain Jane, I think. And so the other one that I then went on to was Growler. Um, it claims to have over two million bears and their admirers on there. Now, this is probably one of my favourite apps I ever went on because not only are there people that are just after that one thing, but there's also some really lovely people on there that you get to know. I'm, as everyone that knows me again um, will know, I'm obsessed with bears that's my type and I know people say they don't really have a type it's about personality they don't think about looks which is rubbish because if you meet someone there's an attraction there I mean there will be a bit like some 
other chemistry there, but I think the physical attraction has to be there in some kind of way. So, bears are my thing. Like, rugby player build, just big blokes. And so that app is just the one for me, I think. When, obviously, I was single, um, that's just the one that I'd always go on. And I'd always find someone that I liked and to chat to. I mean, I felt bad because I wasn't in that bracket. I'm not a big hairy man. But it's pretty much for anyone, really. Like, as I said before, bears and their revivals. So it's a nice thing. And uh, they're quite friendly on there as well. The next one is Hornet. Now, Hornet's where I met my partner. And... It says it's what Grindr should have been. Um, I think that's absolutely right. It's not as sordid as Grindr. It has like filters and stuff like that. You can search through so many different people. So literally you can just scroll and scroll and scroll. So you're in Portsmouth, you just scroll all the way up to like Scotland and beyond. So you're not limited to who you can look for and you can search for other areas and it's just a really good app. But obviously there's gonna be knobheads on there because there are loads of things. I know people are skeptical about using online dating because it's not always really dating, it's just online hookups. Um, and I know it's difficult when you're gay going out if it's not in a gay bar or even if it is in a gay bar. I mean it's hard to approach people but it's even harder when you don't know if people are gay or not because you don't want to get smacked in the face. And even with apps you're never completely sure who you're meeting it could not be the person that you thought it was it could be someone pretending to be someone else to sort of stitch you up or have a laugh at you post things on the world wide web because they think it's funny or you've had some misunderstanding between each other um, or it could be people that hate gay people that want to go and bash you but there's not as many occurrences of that reported as people are afraid of. Um, but apps are starting to just or always have been a thing of like ancient photos, no photos, rejection, STIs, people that aren't out, people that are married and are on apps, people that say they're in open relationships but really they're cheating, pick swappers that don't want it to go anywhere else. It's like a meat market. You're just scrolling through pictures of, do I like that, do I like that, no, no, no. It's like going around a supermarket, oh I like that face, I like that ass. I like that chest. And it's just, are you close? Are you what I'm looking for? Do you meet my criteria that I've set in? How quick can you get here? Are you top? Are you bottom? Do you want fun? Show me pictures. It's just become very much a show me what you have to offer me. I don't want to know about your personality, who you are. I want to know about what part of your body I can have and what's going to satisfy me. So you kind of become someone else's masturbation aid, really. And it's kind of grim to look at it like that. If that's what you're looking for, that's fine. But I think it has become just about that. And that's what I don't like about apps. But I also know it's kind of a necessity for gay people to be able to meet people if you don't like the gay culture or the scene. So it's sort of like an unnecessary evil, though it's not always evil, if you get me. It's like Tinder, where your face is just there for people to swipe and say, I don't like you, I don't like you, I don't like you. Um, apparently they make 12 million matches um, every day, but out of those 12 million matches, there's 1 billion people that are actually swiping. So that's not a great success rate really I don't think and that's literally just people 
looking at your face, not thinking, who is this person? Are they nice? What do they do? I'm intrigued about them. That's what you're missing when you do face to face, is that connection, that chemistry with someone to know, actually, yeah, I do like them. Maybe they don't have the eyes, eye colour I like. Maybe they don't like the hair colour I like. Maybe they're not the build I usually go for. But it's that connection that is the thing that keeps people together and starts a relationship in the first place. Um, And it's things like Tinder where you just swipe because you don't like the look of them. It's making us lose touch with what dating is really about. So in one way, I'm kind of glad I'm out of the whole dating scene because it is tricky, it can get lonely. You do end up going for people that aren't really your type because you're starting to feel lonely, you think you should be getting out there more. But I do kind of miss it for the connecting with other people and just getting to know other people because it's hard these days to just meet new friends and through YouTube I've done that and it's amazing but it's hard to meet people around your area that you can meet up with a lot of the time that's outside of work. So there are good and bad parts of dating but I just thought seeing as I'd been on so many dates because it's hard to know whether the person you're actually talking to is going to be the same in person and it usually ends up that they're not and there's just not that spark I thought I'd do a vlog about it why not? so thanks for watching I know I've rambled but that's what I do best there might be more dating ones um, coming out we shall see But I just wanted to talk about some of the apps and why I like them, why I don't like them. And just some of the issues I feel it has. I may know of... Thanks. Goodbye. So, thanks for watching. Um, If you enjoyed it, please like it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, Comment below any questions or nice comments you want to leave. If you've got bad comments, leave them too. It's good to have constructive criticism. And please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. 